Okay, so what I came to understand was that belief systems regulated emotions but not exactly psychologically, like it isn't exactly it isn't exactly, and this is sort of like the terror management theories it's not exactly like you have a theory in your head and the theory explains the world and because the theory explains the world the theory is what's making you secure it's kind of like that it's like you have a theory in your head and the theory makes you feel secure because it explains the world but the reason it explains the world is because other people have the same theory in their head and then when you both act out the theory you both get what you want and it's the, it's the coming together of the theory and the outcome that makes you it's life it not only does it stop you from being anxious and, and often make you happy because you get what you want but it's not just psychological, you know, the fact that we do this that we cooperate within our societies we match our belief systems and then act them out that's the predicate for a productive society so it's actually, it isn't that just that it saves saves you from death anxiety, like the terror management theorists have it it's, it saves you from death and that's good, I mean, being protected from death anxiety yeah, oh good, that's great too, man but actually not dying, that's sort of the fundamental thing that you're after and so, people have reason to defend their territory if you think of territory that way, as, as if you think about it as a domain where the fundamental presuppositions of each citizen are matched by the behavior of their co-citizens they have every reason to defend that and if it falls apart, it can have mortally serious consequences, it's chaos, you know, and that chaos doesn't just destabilize everybody psychologically it destabilizes everything, it can destabilize the currency, it can destabilize the industrial economy it can, the lights can go off, it's like it's not good, so hey, no wonder people protect it so then I started thinking about what a belief system was and I realized that a belief system was actually a set of moral guidelines and moral guidelines are guidelines about how you should behave also how you should perceive and the reason that a moral guideline is necessary for you to perceive is that you can't look at anything without a hierarchy of value right? think about it, like how many things in this room could you look at? there's an in innumerable things in this room to look at there's just all these squares, the little tiny squares in this fabric you could look at those things for till the end of time, one at a time, but you don't do that in fact, if I took most of you out of this room there's a very low probability that you'll be, you'd be able to tell me what color the walls were or even if those things were on the walls and the reason for that is that, who cares? as long as the walls don't move color is irrelevant and there's no reason for you to remember it it has no emotional significance it has no value and so what you do instead is well, this is what you're doing so why are you here? I don't mean in the broad metaphysical sense, I mean specifically why are you here right now? and I would say, well, you're students, obviously and you're trying to get a degree and you know, you believe that that will have some functional utility maybe you'll be a little wiser and a little more literate and, a little, and be able to think a little better and be able to write a little better and so you'll actually be more functional in the world that would be good you know, and, and maybe you're interested, and, but anyways, it's you're in this particular lecture so that you can take this particular class so that you can get a particular kind of degree so that you can launch your life and then in your life you're probably going to meet someone that you have a long-term relationship with and you're going to have children and you're going to partake in this society and that's why you're here all of those reasons simultaneously is why you're here and so then that helps you decide what to look at and so what you look at is at the moment, or listen to, is me because in principle I'm the gateway to that set of accomplishments at this moment and so you focus on me and that's because you value that and so what that means is you can't even look at the world without a value structure you know, it's chaos 
if everything is equally unimportant or if everything is equally important it's chaos and so a value system structures the very way that you perceive the world and I don't mean that metaphysically there's plenty of experiments that have demonstrated that like the invisible gorilla experiment which how many of you know about the invisible gorilla experiment how many don't well roughly speaking what happens is that there are two teams a white team dressed, dressed in white and a team dressed in black and there's a video of them and the black team is passing a basketball back and forth and the white team is passing a basketball back and forth and you're supposed to count the times the basketball gets passed back and forth there's only one basketball and so you know, you're diligent for whatever reason you do what the experimenter asks you and you count the basketball tosses and you think well that's not so hard, it's like 16 so you tell them 16 and they say did you see the gorilla? and half of you say what, what are you talking about? and the experimenter says well let's watch again but this time don't count well sure enough like 30 seconds into the video and you know the, the players fill the video screen it's not like they're 300 yards in the distance you know like little ants playing basketball they're right filling the screen you can see their faces sure enough a minute into the video, this guy in a gorilla suit, and he's not little, and neither is the gorilla suit, he comes out bangs his chest right in the middle of the screen for five seconds, and then disappears and half, more than half actually, of people don't see that and it's even worse, Dan Simon did another experiment where you're at a counter, you know, at a store and there's a clerk there, and you're talking to the clerk, and the clerk goes down hypothetically to get something and a different clerk pops up and you'd think, hey I'd notice that but you don't and you can even vary the clerk quite a bit and people don't notice so we focus on very particular things and the reason we don't notice is because it actually doesn't matter in terms of the ongoing our ongoing action at that point the clerk is interchangeable as long as the entity there acts like a clerk that's sufficient.